The Red Raiders are set to return to Memphis to play in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl against a familiar foe and an old Southwest Conference rival in the Arkansas Razorbacks. In today's video, we'll preview that matchup for your Texas Tech Red Raiders, give you the must-watch players for the Arkansas Razorbacks, and, well, talk about the odds, and I'll give my prediction. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's R.C. Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to stay in the know on all things Texas Tech football all year long. We've got you covered through bowl season, transfer portal season, and everything else. So join the largest group of Texas Tech fans and the most interactive group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube by simply liking the video and hitting that subscribe button. I said interactive, and I mean it. Who you got for this one? Texas Tech versus Arkansas, the 38th all-time matchup between these two schools, dating back to the Southwest Conference in terms of this rivalry, will take place there in Memphis. Solid barbecue. It's no Texas, but it is what it is on that front. Let me know who you've got winning this matchup down on the pinned comment below. All right, let's set the scene a little bit. There's some things to go over here. First and foremost, I thought this was arguably one of the best outcomes for the Red Raiders in the sense that they were getting projected to play in the Armed Forces Bowl in Fort Worth, which would have made me throw up profusely on my living room carpet. They were also getting projected to go to the Guaranteed Rate Bowl out in Phoenix, which wouldn't have made me throw up profusely, but I would have gagged a little bit in terms of trying to keep the throw up in, right? You know what I'm saying? The Liberty Bowl is it the greatest bowl in the world. I don't think anybody's going to tell you that. But you get to play an SEC opponent, and now I get it. It's not Texas A&M. That's who we were hoping for um, if you're part of Red Raider Nation. But let's be real. The Aggies were never going to let that happen on the gridiron. It's just the truth, okay? So you get a team in Arkansas that, yes, you see it 6-6 six and six on the year, but they're a solid team. They're headed in the right direction, and it's a fun opponent dating back to the Southwest Conference. Now that I've mentioned that three times, I think we've got the point on that. But – Dating back to Texas Tech and their history in the Liberty Bowl, you only have to go back a few years to 2021. You may remember this game where Joey McGuire had actually been hired at this point, but it was Sonny Cumbie who was the interim head coach facing off against the late great Mike Leach. And Sonny Cumbie actually beat his former well coach in this game, 34 to 7. And funny enough, Donovan Smith, the quarterback at Houston, well, was the starting quarterback at Houston, still is a quarterback at Houston, um, was the MVP award winner of that game. Now, the last time that Texas Tech has played Arkansas, you have to go back almost a decade to 2015. Remember, they had that home and home did the Razorbacks and the Red Raiders where Texas Tech lost in 2014 to the Razorbacks out in Lubbock. And then in 2015, went up to Fayetteville and beat the Razorbacks by a score of 35 to 24. You might know the starting quarterback in this game. He He's just won a few Super Bowls in Kansas City. Patrick Mahomes, never heard of him. Never, never, never heard of him. As I mentioned, this will be the 38th all-time meeting between these two teams, but it will be the first time that they have ever played in a bowl. Now, setting the scene for this one, it will take place at Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium out in Memphis, Tennessee. The game is scheduled for Friday, December 27th at 6 p.m. Central Time, and it will take place on a national stage on ESPN. Now, this is a Texas Tech channel, and I don't know how many people have actually watched Arkansas play this year, so I'm going to give you the lay of the land in terms of six players that really stand out to me that you need to know who they are for the Razorbacks. Three on offense, three on defense. Let's start with the offensive side of the football, and it all starts with quarterback Taylor Green, number 10. His stats aren't going to wow you, okay? It's 20 total touchdowns, nine interceptions this year. Again, not wow stats, right? You're like, no, that, that's okay. It's decent, right? He is second on the team in rushing yards as well, behind a guy we'll discuss here in just a second. But Green is the type of quarterback that really the Red Raiders struggle with. Just point blank, simple and plain. They struggle with this type of quarterback. And if you watch Texas Tech play football, you know exactly what type of quarterback I'm talking about. The one that can extend plays, get outside of the pocket, use his legs, but also not be afraid to push the envelope downfield after the off-scripted plays, Right. He's super athletic, and he is a guy that if you keep him in the pocket, I really think your chances of winning skyrocket, Dogecoin to the moon, right? 
But if you allow him to get outside the pocket, use his legs, and also throw on the run, it could, could like just potentially be a bad, bad night for the Red Raiders in Memphis. I truly mean that. So, again, the biggest thing for Texas Tech in this one is set the edge, keep him contained, and make him a passer. If you allow him to use his athleticism, again, could be a long night. Jaquindon Jackson is his partner in crime in the backfield, the running back number 22 for the uh, Razorbacks. He's one of the more underrated running backs in the country, in my opinion. If you watch Arkansas tape, he pops. Okay, like he pops on film. Now, his stats aren't crazy. He has 790 rushing yards. It's not terrible, but it's also not, you know, Taj Brooks, right? He does have 15 rushing touchdowns this year, and the real strength of this Arkansas offense is very similar to what Texas Tech does, except for the fact that Green is more athletic than Morton and more of a threat to run than Morton, obviously. But they use the RPO and play action pass a lot, and teams really, really respect Jackson. Now, the thing with Jackson that scares me more than anything up against this Texas Tech defense is what's the thing that this defense has struggled to do arguably all year? And I know that like every one of you said probably seven different things because the defense really wasn't good. I mean, good is too far of a word. It, it, it was abysmal. It was booty cheeks, as I like to say here on the channel. Um, tackling was the thing here. Jackson will run you over and have no qualms about it, okay? He is that kind of player. So you have to make sure that you get him down at the point of attack and not allow him to get yards after contact because if he does, again, it has the potential to be a long night at the office for the Red Raiders. Now, the other offensive player I wanted to highlight was Andrew Armstrong, wide receiver number two, stands at 6'4", and he's the only wide receiver close to 1,000 yards for the Razorbacks. He actually had 1,140, but only one receiving touchdown. Kind of interesting there. The next closest wide receiver on the team in terms of pat or receiving yards, excuse me, is 491. Armstrong is a long, rangy wide receiver. As I mentioned, he's 6'4", and those 50-50 balls are not 50-50 balls when he is in the area. It's more 80-20 in his favor. You could see a similar treatment to what the Red Raiders did against Tatero and McMillan against Arizona early on in the year. McMillan is a better wide receiver than Armstrong, but Armstrong and McMillan have the same impact within their respective offenses. So he is going to be a guy that the Red Raiders much, must must know where he is at all time. And I would not be surprised if you see a too high cover shell there where it's like, okay, you're playing man with the corner, but there's always safety help over the top. And that's something that the Red Raiders are going to have to game plan for for sure. All right. Again, one more time, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. If you want to join the largest group of Texas tech fans here on YouTube and the best part about the channel, it's 100% free. And we're giving you content ranging from what's happening on the field, rumors off of it, the portal, the portal just opened people. This is going to be a wild portal season. If you want to know each and every player Texas tech is targeting or could be on a potential visit to Texas tech, this is the channel for you. So join the largest group of Texas Tech fans on YouTube, over 11,000 strong today by simply liking the video and hitting that subscribe button. All right, let's transition to the defensive side of the football for the Razorbacks. And there's three guys that stand out to me. One most notably is the guy we will talk about first, Landon Jackson, a defensive lineman, number 40, 6'7", 280, and... I might be too low on him in terms of I think he's likely a day two pick in the NFL draft, but it would not shock me whatsoever if he is a late first round pick. He is that kind of difference maker. You must know where he is at all the damn time if you were this Texas Tech offense in Barron Morton because he can wreak havoc. Now, his sack stats are not going to really wow you. It's six and a half, right? Like that's a solid number. But this guy was getting double teamed, triple teamed, what felt like consistently this year when you watch his tape. He is a guy that the Red Raider offensive line is going to have their hands full with each and every damn snap that he is on the field. And you must know where he is. And he's not just a guy that's going to use his strength. No, he's got a little bit of finesse, too. He's got a little bend to him. He can really beat you in a multitude of ways in terms of getting to the quarterback. Texas Tech is going to have to use probably a tight end on the side of the field just to chip block in to kind of help the offensive tackles. Cause let's be real. The offensive line has been improved slightly for Texas tech this year, but it's still probably in the range of bad 
if we're being honest. And this is a guy that can make it a long day at the office for Baird Morton. All right, Xavier Sori Jr., he was seventh in the SEC in tackles this year with 89, and he is the heart and soul of the middle of that Razorback defense. He is a traditional sideline-to-sideline -side linebacker. If you like watching Jacob Rodriguez, you are going to wa like watching Xavier Sori Jr. as well. He is number 10 on the uh, defense, excuse me. So you're going to have to know both number 10s for the Razorbacks. Obviously, the starting quarterback and Taylor Green, and then Xavier Sori Jr. on the defense. Now, Danico Slaughter, first and foremost, baller ass name. There's no way around it. That name is baller. Okay. He's second on the Razorbacks in tackles this season, always seemingly around the football. I don't know how it's possible, but it really feels like that. Him and Sori just always kind of feel like they're in the play, if that makes sense, right? He's a guy that can play downhill from the secondary. He's not afraid to go and guard the best receiver or help out there in the secondary as well. Leads the Razorbacks in pass deflections with five. He has one interception on the year. He's the guy you need to know for the Razorbacks in the secondary. So we covered each guy there in terms of the three levels on the defense, on the defensive line, you got to know Landon Jackson. I, I, I think Landon Jackson is arguably the best player in this football game. And actually, I don't think it's arguably. That doesn't matter if it's a Red Raider or a Razorback. He is the best player in this football game. Um, he's that good. Um, then you got Xavier Suri, the linebacker. And then you've got Danico Slaughter again, just a baller ass name right there. When it comes to must watch matchup, let's go back to Taylor Green here. We talked about it. The Texas Tech defensive line is going to have to set the edge and stay in their run gaps, right? Stay in those design lanes because if you let him get out of the pocket and use his legs, congratulations, Arkansas, your chances of winning skyrocket. Okay. Um, if Texas tech can keep him in the pocket and force him not, and not just eliminate him getting outside, just limit it. We're not asking you to totally, you know, take it away from them. But if you limit those opportunities to allow him to stin, extend plays, to run out of the pocket, but instead you keep him in the pocket and force him to be a passer, I think Texas Tech has a really good chance at winning this football game because Taylor Green is a good quarterback, but the passing aspect of his game is still hit or miss sometimes is probably the nicest way to say it. So the must-watch matchup for me in this one is containing – Taylor Green, so Taylor Green versus the Texas Tech edges and defensive line, keeping him contained in the pocket. When it comes to the odds for this game, Arkansas opened as a two and a half point favorite. The total over under is set at just below 60 at 59 and a half. I've got the Red Raiders winning this football game. Call me a homer if you want. I think you're going to see a lot of Texas Tech players play in this game. Um, obviously there's guys leaving for the portal, just like there's guys leaving for the portal in every other game. And even on the other sideline for the Arkansas Razorbacks as well. I think Texas tech comes out and wins this football game by a score of 34 to 30. I think the Texas tech defensive line does just enough. And then at the end of the day, I think Josh Kelly has one final game that is absolutely sensational in the scarlet and black. All right. One more time. Let me know your uh, score prediction for the Red Raiders and the Razorbacks out in Memphis. Again, solid barbecue, solid barbecue, probably third best in the country, if we're being honest about it, right? Texas is one, Kansas City two, Memphis three. I know there's some North Carolina people out there, but that's too vinegary for me. I'm digressing here. I am digressing. But if you want to let me know your score prediction, let me know down on the pinned comment below. And before you head out of here one more time, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to stay in the know on Texas Tech football all year long right here on a 100% free and the largest Texas Tech community on YouTube in the Back to 12 podcast channel.